Yvain, which is Chrétien de Troyes' version of Owain, um, the knight uh, with the lion, is interesting in any number of ways. And we're going to talk a little bit more uh, when we get into Owain and the, um, the, the Welsh version of this story uh, about a number of folkloric and, and mythic motifs. But one that I, I want to talk about just very briefly today is uh, this idea of the, the wild man of the wood, um, known in, um, uh, in English, uh, it's, it's the wood woes or the wood woes. Uh, and the, uh, um, in, um, in, in, in Celtic versions, uh, very often you, you see the, the gruagach. Um, so it's a, a figure who goes out into the woods, uh, often uh, you know, beginning as, as an ordinary person and for whatever reason, uh, almost in the hermetic tradition of the Desert Fathers um, uh, in, uh, in the Egyptian desert, you know, which is the kind of very basic uh, roots of monasticism. You know, people who would go out into the wilderness and just kind of live, uh, you know, maybe with a hair shirt uh, on, 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 on locusts and honey they could find. Uh, and it's very interesting. Um, you have this theme uh, in a number of romances. And um, when we look at Sir Orfeo, we'll definitely see this theme because when he loses his wife, he goes out into the, the wilderness and he, he evokes uh, uh, the wild man of the, uh, the woods motif. But what's interesting about Yvain is he, uh, he, he makes a vow um, uh, and he breaks that vow. Uh, and, um, and then he, uh, he's called out on this and uh, uh, and he has to kind of go through, it's almost like a journey to the underworld, right? He has to kind of go through this process of, uh, uh, of um, reclaiming uh, who he was and, uh, and his honor. Um, but this idea of the wild man of the woods is a really interesting one. And we, uh, we're going to see it and uh, um, we're going to look at it in more detail in a way. And of course, uh, when we, we deal with the Welsh version of the Night of the Lion, we'll, we'll also see it in, um, in Sir Orfeo. And I just want to point out that it's particularly interesting in this context because the, um, what, what Yvain does uh, uh, when he, um, uh, he confronts the initial challenge and, and becomes the Knight of the Fountain, he defeats the Knight of the Fountain, uh, um, who was the consort of the lady. Uh, and if, uh, if you'll recall, when he first goes to the fountain, uh, if you perform the ritual, what happens is, uh, is basically there's a... a a mighty uh, a hailstorm and and you know everything's beaten down there and the, and the crops are destroyed and this evokes this ancient theme of uh, of the fertility goddess who's uh, you know who, who who's representative of the land uh, and then her consort here is the protector of that so he protects the fountain uh, so he protects the land from being devastated and he. Uh, uh, he's to defeat all challengers who would uh, try to take his place because every time somebody does that, of course, it's, it's devastating for the countryside. So there's this idea of this, this nature spirit fixed in this specific spot in the fountain, right? You know, which uh, again, in, in kind of a Celtic uh, mythological context, uh, um, any place like that, you know, running water, um, uh, uh, notable um, uh, geographical features are always very important. Um, and so he becomes the knight of the fountain. And then when he leaves that to go to the court of Arthur and then doesn't come back uh, within the time he was supposed to, to protect the, the land, he has not just broken his troth with his lady, but he has turned his back on his uh, position as protector uh, of that countryside. So it's really interesting. He has to go through this journey in the wilderness in order to be reborn into the form that he should have maintained all along. Uh, uh, with all of his honor intact and also, uh, uh, you know, as the knight who is going to protect uh, the fountain and, um, and do the bidding of his lady who is representative, really, of that country. Um, so here, this wood woes or gruagach theme uh, is particularly interesting. And, and, and then he, of course, has his companion uh, who's a wild beast, you know, the, the, the wild lion who becomes a steadfast companion, uh, which indicates the, uh, the, the wildness within him, right? But, uh, but all of this is because he has to go back uh, uh, and become the protector of the landscape, the domesticated landscape that he had been when he became the, uh, the, uh, the knight of the fountain. So it's a really interesting play on this idea of the wood woes uh, or the, um, uh, the wild man of the wood and, and, and how this is for, uh, for Yvain and, and, of course, in the Welsh version, uh, Owain, a transformative uh, rebirth, um, really. Uh, he's, uh, he, he is, he's reborn into the form he should have uh, maintained, uh, and his honor then is intact, and he is able to live happily uh, ever after with his lady.